Hello, and welcome to the American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference pre-conference broadcast series on One Concept Radio. I'm Felicia Brown, and I'll be your host for this interview and series. This is one of several broadcasts with the presenters and experts who are appearing in San Diego, California, April 20th through 22nd, 2012, and who are brought to you by One Concept. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the 2012 American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference sponsors, Massage Warehouse Script, MPA Media, H.J. Ross, ABMP, and Massage Envy Careers for making this year's event possible. Our special guest today is Tina Allen. Tina and I will be talking about her three-hour class, Pediatric Massage, Highlighting Massage for Autism and ADD, ADHD. But first, let me tell you a little about Tina. With over a decade of service to children and families, Tina Allen, founder of leading children's health and nurturing touch organization, the Little Kids Foundation, has become an internationally respected lecturer, author, and authority in the field of infant and pediatric massage therapy. Tina managed the United States' first comprehensive pediatric massage program at Children's Hospital Los Angeles and developed pediatric massage programs at Mattel Children's Hospital at UCLA and Cedars-Sinai Medical Center. She is currently consulting on the development of comprehensive pediatric massage programs for the Mayo Clinic, Nemours Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children, and Connecticut Children's Medical Center. She is a 2009 Massage Hall of Fame inductee and 2011 International Massage Therapist of the Year. Her innovative approach to children's health has allowed her the unique opportunity to educate families and professionals throughout the world in the many benefits of nurturing touch. Tina, as always, welcome to the American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference pre-conference broadcast series. I so appreciate you making the time to talk with me about the event and, of course, about your class, Pediatric Massage, Highlighting Massage for Autism and ADD, ADHD. Thanks so much, Felicia. It's, um, it's great to be here and have a chance to speak with you again, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in San Diego. Well, of course, we're thrilled to have you on the program and at the conference coming up in April. Now, I know you're on the go a lot, and you travel all over the world to teach. What is it about this conference that makes it a must-see for practitioners as well as for educators like yourself? For me, one of the great things being that you mentioned I travel, I travel 365 days a year. It really feels like all the time. Um, and so it's nice to have an opportunity to come together and make those connections again and um, see everyone in person. So for myself, it's, it's one of these um, events that you look forward to and, and knowing that you're going to see all the people that have put it together and worked so hard to make something so awesome happen and to have everybody together in, in one uh, big space and, and see this community of, of healthcare providers coming together to collaborate and, and learn from each other and share. It's just, um, it's just, it's exciting. And it, 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 it's, it's, I say that and it sounds, oh, it's exciting, but it is. And, and you're excited looking forward to it. You're excited while you're there and you leave just all full of just great information and just really um, inspired to go out and do really good work. You're exactly right. I feel the same way and always end up walking away from these events just feeling like I'm on a cloud from all the positive energy and fantastic ideas and collaboration uh, that comes from being at these, all the great networking and just really a lot of fun too. It's not all work while we're there. We do get to have a pretty good time as well. It is. It's a lot of fun. And and it's funny because it's one of the best careers you can have being in massage as much as it you have to work very hard and you do. It's great when you're walking around a conference and you're talking to a colleague and they start to massage your shoulders or something like that. And these are the nice little side benefits of being a therapist because other conferences you go to, everybody's shaking hands. And, and this is a conference where everybody is, is giving a hug to say hello. It's just it's nice to uh, feel that nice community connection. Most definitely. Now, one of the events at the conference this year is the golf tournament that's benefiting the Make-A-Wish Foundation and specifically benefiting a wish child from San Diego. Now, I just recently learned that you made the introduction for us to the people at Make-A-Wish. What is it you think that makes this tournament so special? 
Well, Make-A-Wish is, is a fantastic organization, and in, in if you're not familiar, they give a wish to a child who who may be having some medical challenges or maybe is having life-limited expectancy or, or some reason that we really want to celebrate this child and something that would make them really, really happy. And one of the great things about Make-A-Wish is when they give a wish to a child or they grant this wish, they not only have the child participate in the wish fulfillment of whatever they've chosen, but the whole family gets to participate, which is one of the things that makes that Make-A-Wish organization very special. It, when I uh, was speaking with the organizers of the conference, um, I, I know that um, Scott Dartnell and Angie Patrick uh, both are, are organizers of the conference in, in San Diego, and both of their children have actually been recipients of, of Make-A-Wish. And so when we were talking uh, about it and, and they mentioned that they wanted to do something to, to give back to Make-A-Wish, I, I did. I stepped up and I wanted to participate, and I still will. I want to participate in any way to make make this a uh, possibility. So I was really happy to make that connection because the uh, group that puts on this conference is a really fantastic group and, and um, a wonderful organization, and it's just a great collaboration to be able to use this conference in a way to have this tournament and be able to give back to such a wonderful um, uh, organization who's done so much for so many families all over the world. It's it's um, it's just, it's really exciting for me, and I, I'm really uh, happy to have that small bit of involvement. is is um, is fine. I, I wanted to do it because I wanted to try to have a, another child be a wish recipient, and and that tournament will make that possible, which is amazing. Well, it's just one more way in which you and your work are benefiting children all over the place, and uh, I know that. Uh, everyone in the in the conference really appreciates your involvement. And again, the introduction. Now, in oh, terms I'm of happy to do it. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. It's 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 minute in in the work that will be done at the tournament to to fulfill that wish for that child. And and uh, if I could be involved in any minute way, I'm happy to do it. Excellent. Well, again, we appreciate that. Now. Tina, I know that you have a really unique professional path, and as you alluded to, an actual on-the-road lifestyle um, I, that's really pretty interesting. I'd like for you to tell our listeners how you got started providing massage to children and what you do now um, that puts you on that on-the-road lifestyle. Yeah, it's a little different. I mean, it's definitely a little bit of different uh, kind of lifestyle than maybe some other uh, therapists have pursued. Myself, I'm from Los Angeles originally, and became a massage therapist as an adjunct therapy to uh, studying pediatric occupational therapy. And, and something that I've um, mentioned to you before is that I didn't know exactly that I would be going down this path. And I think that happens in lots of different professions as we start to seek out something and then try some different types of uh, professional experiences along the way, and, and we create a different path. And so my path is, is, has gone into wanting to be in massage therapy and really focusing on pediatrics and working really specifically with the families and healthcare providers who provide care for those children, children that are healthy and also children that have a variety of different kinds of healthcare needs. I think it's really important because the information is just not out there, and that's part of the reason why I um, have devoted my life in trying to get this information out there to as many people as possible because when I was in massage therapy school, they didn't even mention working with children. It wasn't even spoken about. Spoken about. And so when I started to go out and work in, in providing massage for clients in many different uh, facilities and environments, I realized that there wasn't any information out there and people weren't providing touch and massage for children lots of times because of the different diagnosis uh, that a child may have. People were scared of it. They, I didn't know what to do. Um, so the education piece was, was a, um, the idea behind what I what I started to do was to seek out um, adding more to my educational pieces for others so that they could also be empowered to go out and do this work. And one of the um, ideas in that is I actually wanted to get it to as many people as possible. And so, of course, I can travel around and fly around and do all of that, which I do, and I speak at a lot of conferences and I teach all over the world, but I actually live in a tour bus. When you mentioned being on the road, I live in a tour bus with uh, my husband, who's fabulously supportive of my work, and we have a three-year-old son who travels with us, and uh, we travel 365 days a year, and I'm at work um, giving workshops or conferences or lectures just about every single weekend, and um, getting there in a tour bus to do that. It's 
pretty amazing and so so astounding to me the commitment that you've made to this work and not just you I mean your whole family to get behind you and go where you are needed to share this work and um and then to to provide volunteering uh services and opportunities as well in some of the other places that you've worked um can you share some of those um volunteer situations or some of the special populations that you've worked with Absolutely. I I um, do work with um, lots of different uh, kiddos in lots of different settings, but one of the things that you've asked about is the uh, volunteering aspect. And the volunteering aspect is where I take um, groups of volunteers to other parts of the world to work in orphanages and other types of child uh, care facilities, providing nurturing touch and massage for infants and children who honestly would never even be picked up, which is really um difficult to think about, but it's a reality. And sometimes it's due to the fact that there's just an enormous uh, number of children in these facilities with limited care staff. And sometimes it's uh, cultural that the care staff doesn't know to pick them up or doesn't benefit in it. And so one of the pieces is that the volunteers and myself, we not only provide the hands-on care, but we also teach the staff how to do it. And so uh, just recently I was in Japan uh, working with uh, children and their care providers, children that were victims of the tsunami. And so um, kiddos that are that are having a lot of trauma and after effects of, of maybe being displaced or losing their family and losing their home. And then also um, recently, just prior to that, we had a group that we took to Vietnam and we worked in seven orphanages over uh, uh, two and a half weeks and provided uh, touch to hundreds and hundreds of kids and taught hundreds of uh, care providers how to do it as well. So part of that work is, of course, to get the hands-on piece in there, whether we're providing it, but also that sustainable aspect of educating others so it can continue is really important to me. Just amazing. I I said it before and I'll say it again. I just am astounded when I listen to you and I hear about the work that you do. It's so um, thought-provoking. So, I don't know, it pulls at my heartstrings. And I really think that it's a tremendous uh, commitment and level of, I don't know, service isn't really the right word. It's just the outpouring of love that you show to the world and to these children who aren't getting it from anywhere else, and you're not only giving it to them, but you're empowering others to provide it for them. It's just, a, it's just aw, awesome, truly awesome. Well, I, I thank you. I mean, I'll tell you, I get something from it as well. So, um, and, <laughs> and, and and people always say, "Oh my gosh, you just you give so much," and but the reality is, when you do that work, you get so much in return. Um, whether it's a child that smiles for the first time or they make eye contact and they never have, you see it. And that's the great thing about touch and massage, especially with children, you actually can see benefits happening right before your eyes, which sounds really amazing. Um, but it, it, it's true. And and, it, and you see it happen. And, and so you do, you, you get a lot in return, really, in, in an instant. I have no doubt about that. Well, thank you for doing that. Now, this class that you're teaching on uh, ADD, HD, AD, I always get these alphabet soups mixed up, <laughs> ADD, ADHD, and autism, it seems to have really become one of the more popular classes that you teach and perhaps what you're becoming most known for. Um, why is it that the use of massage therapy with these conditions is gaining so much notice or is in hi such high demand? I think part of it is because there's this misnomer that children with autism uh, don't like to be touched. And, and that's one of the things I hear most often is, well, you're talking about massage for children or touch therapy for children with um, autism spectrum disorders or ADD or ADHD. And, well, these kids don't like to be touched and they won't sit still and none of that's actually true. It's, uh, it's a matter of how you approach it and techniques that you use and um, if you have to, sitting on the floor right next to them as opposed to, you know, getting out of this idea of, well, they have to lay down on the massage table to have a massage. Well, that's not true. And so there's different ways of using touch and tactile stimulation and different sensory integration techniques that you can use that actually can make that connection that a lot of people are uh, unaware of. And, and what we're finding is with autism and ADHD is it's so mainstream. 
the general public is very aware of these different diagnoses. You can't turn on a TV without something being mentioned about autism uh, almost every single day. And the rate is is getting uh, higher and higher. The last published rate from the CDC was is 1 in 91 children affected by autism spectrum disorders. And if you look at other studies, and depending on who you speak to, a lot of people think that rate is even higher. So we're seeing an increase, and, and, and the general public is um, – really affected and almost everybody knows somebody um, who has a child in their life or a child in the classroom that has um, some type of uh, diagnosis on, on this spectrum. So um, it's become such a, a mainstream commonplace um, situation that people are seeking out different types of modalities and therapies to use with their with these kids. Well, I think you're right. I hear about it all the time. I don't personally have children, but I know a lot of people that have gone through that diagnosis with their kids and the frustration or um, scariness of how do we deal with this, and they're always looking for new options, you know, really trying to search out every possible thing to make life better for their children. And, in fact, uh, in, at the Canadian Massage Conference, one of the people in one of my classes um, was someone who worked with this population. Of course, she was going to be attending your class. She couldn't wait. But she was saying, you know, it was her own personal experience as a mother that uh, made her want to offer this service to others and, you know, to be able to provide some of the care that she had found helpful in her own situation and, I guess, to be supportive to people maybe in a way that they hadn't experienced before. Do you see that a lot? Absolutely. A lot of um, practitioners that come to my courses are either parents that have been affected directly or or even other um, family members that have been affected because they have children in their lives that have a diagnosis on the spectrum. A lot of people actually don't even realize that ADD and or ADHD and autism spectrum disorders is often a co-diagnosis, which is why I present them together because there are a lot of overlapping symptoms and presentations. And so I'll have uh, someone who comes to the course thinking um, they have a child that has autism. And I don't get into diagnosing. That's not my, my scope of practice. But at, they start to Day in the course, as I'm speaking about the different um, symptoms and things that go across this entire spectrum, oh, well, I see that characteristic in my child, and I have never thought of that. They'll go home that, that, that first evening after class, try a couple of techniques, and come back and share the story in the morning, and it, it's just amazing the different stories that I hear um, when they've gone home and just tried a couple of techniques at night, uh, things that they'd never thought of. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, and it's great that you are providing a chance for them to have some options or some different tools to take home with them and um, find success with so quickly, potentially. Absolutely. It is. And, and, and part of it is, is just, I think, my, my goal is to empower as many people as possible, even to just open their eyes to different different uh, disciplines and modalities and things that you can try. And it might be that they try a couple of techniques and maybe they are not as successful at that moment with with their child, but if they were to try, just to have the mind open to try lots of different things can create an opportunity for, for success in, in making connections. I like the way that you said that, creating an opportunity for success. That's a really um, a great way to look at it instead of um, sort of having a wall there just trying new things and looking to see what might happen to be possible. This is a great avenue to do that, I would think. Absolutely. I, yeah, absolutely. So now, Tina, why do touch providers need increased education um, to work with pediatric clients, and in particular clients with autism or ADD and ADHD? Part of it is, uh, for practitioners, one is, of course, to have any kind of foundation in how to work with children is extremely important because children are so, healthy children are so different from adults. And then if you're talking about children that have these different circumstances, there's a lot of considerations, especially children that have autism. Some of the classical symptoms that we see that are different than other clients, we classically see that some of these kiddos are not as verbal. And so you may request permission from this child to provide massage or if you are a chiropractor to provide to provide your treatment. And you might ask permission, but this child may not say yes or no. They may not even make eye contact. 
So it's really important to have a, fo- a strong foundation in looking for cues and different ways to communicate, especially with this child that is possibly not as verbal as another child. And so it's important to, to just have those, those fundamental tools and then add your practice on top of it. Wow. I, you know, I guess that is something that you don't think about in your normal um, everyday life if you're not working with this population, that the way that they would tell you yes or no might not be a nod of the head or the words and right. how to find out when you're actually being given permission to do a particular technique or to touch them in a certain place. That's crucial to really gaining their trust and having any success, I would think. Absolutely. And, that, and that's a huge piece because one of the things I always uh, share with practitioners if you're there with the child and you're trying to, if you're going to provide massage and you're asking permission of this child, if you've been told that they don't like to make eye contact and you've been told that they're not very verbal in a way that we would anticipate for their age, sometimes you, the only way you knowing that they're still engaged in the activity and they wish to receive is if they haven't hit you, uh, bit you or run away. And <laughs> it's, it's a different, it's a completely different population uh, than an adult client or another child. Wow, I guess that's true. That is definitely the kind of response that I'm not expecting from a massage client. <laughs> Even from a, I've worked with some children, and I've never been hit, bit, or had a, cl- a child run out of the room. But I can, you know, I have had someone say, "Oh, I don't like my feet worked on," you know, or they what in whatever right. words they would use, "My feet are ticklish." So yeah, I don't want you to rub my feet. Sure. So that's, that is definitely different, and I can see that as a therapist, you would have to be prepared for what those differences might be. Absolutely. Now, I was I was really lucky to be able to sit in on part of one of your classes um, back in November at the Canadian Massage Conference. We've talked about this before, but it really stuck with me, um, was the, your instruction to the people in the classroom to stay away from technical or even anatomical terms about massage and the body and instead use more familiar terms when talking to these children. The one that really stuck with me was when you were asking if it was okay for you to, quote, hug their arm. So why is this important? It's definitely important with children in general that you use um, terminology that they may have a better understanding of. With uh, children that have um, autism, depending on where they're at on the spectrum, Sometimes um, you may have to, and you and you do with most children anyway, you may have to describe what the technique might feel like. You may have to demonstrate on a teddy bear or the parent's arm so that so a child has a good understanding on what that looks like and they can have a concept on what it might feel like. But to use a term like hugging or uh, something else that gives them a good descriptive picture on what that might be is very important because they can have a better idea what that is. If I talked about using a compression, they may not know what that is. They may not be able to understand that concept, and so then they're maybe going to give us the no cue, as opposed to if I show them what a hug looks like, my interpretation of of this hug technique, then they might have a better understanding, and it's a familiar term to a child, hug. So then it's easy for them to understand, and they might be able then to have this mutual respect, and they might feel more comfortable. And that's very important because you have to have permission from the child before you ever touch them. So if we're using all of these these terminologies and these big words that they don't know, that might be really hard to make that connection. I can see that, and I would think that the visual is really important too. If I don't know if this is the case, but if someone isn't a verbal communicator, they may not understand uh, necessarily some of the verbal words you're using uh, if they're not actively engaged in conversation. So that visual representation of what it is that you would be doing might be the way that they understand. Absolutely. Some of these children actually even the way that we are communicating with them is by using pictures and drawings and and even I have created with um, Massage for Children that are on the spectrum a whole um, set, a series of, of small boards that have pictures. The child can have the ability to point at the body area that they want or point and say yes or no or stop. Or there are even simple signs that some of the children use that, that we learn so that we, we know what the sign is, that if they're giving a little a little sign, we know that that means that they'd like to have a break or to stop. So there's different ways that we will learn to communicate with these kids. That's fascinating. And, I, I mean, it really illustrates for me just how different 
working with this type of a population is. What are what are some of the other specific challenges that come with these kinds of kids with autism and ADD, ADHD? Well, uh, on the spectrum, if we think of autism, because that's the common term that everyone uses, and, and it is a spectrum. And when I say that, it's because we have this almost like a big umbrella where all these little diagnoses fit underneath, and they're considered autism spectrum disorders. Some of them overlap, and then some of them are standalone, and there's different symptoms that often accompany each. But even for a child with Asperger's, if we're working with a child with Asperger's, that is a completely different situation than working with a child with classical autism. The classical autism, I mentioned, maybe they don't make eye contact or not as verbal. A lot of people think they don't like uh, touch. So that's one aspect. With Asperger's, you actually have a child who is very verbal, who is obviously hyper-intelligent, and maybe their imagination is different. So if I'm using different techniques with this child, and I often use, I mentioned um, I mentioned sometimes these massage stories where it's a little bit of an imagination, where I'm going to make a cookie on your back and we're going to have this idea. With the child with Asperger's, you have to actually be very clear and explain there actually isn't a cookie on your back. This is just mm. a game. We're just playing a game. You have, it's a different approach. So even though you might use the same concept in, in doing something like that, the approach is different. So it's important to have a little understanding on the different diagnoses that fit under the spectrum and see where the child is and ask the healthcare team and ask the parents and get as much information as you can and then grab from that toolkit and use what you need in the moment. It's, it's very different from one end to the other end of the spectrum. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of information and a lot to learn. Tell me what you're going to be presenting specifically during the three-hour class in San Diego. Well, we are going to touch on all the spectrum so that people have a good concept on different um, symptoms and diagnoses that they might see and what the spectrum is, because the spectrum is sort of a vague term unless you're familiar. So we are going to cover it. We are going to talk about how ADD and ADHD also come into play, and there are symptoms that overlap, as well as talk about the evidence, uh, the research that advocates for um, massage and touch therapies with these children, some of the results that we've seen based on research. I've, I always share some of my stories, as much as they're anecdotal, um, meaning that I saw it happen in my session, um, I will share that information because there are a lot of things that, that happen in sessions that, that are just wonderful to have information to be able to share with families, as well as we're going to talk about approach, uh, verbal and eye-to-eye -eye contact or lack of eye-to-eye -eye contact. And in all of my sessions, we always do some kind of touch and hands-on exercise. So we're going to have an opportunity where I'll demonstrate techniques and that everybody will practice so that they will leave with tools to be able to use out in the world when they're back with their own clients. So you mentioned that you'll be sharing some success stories in the class. I wonder, is there a short story that you could share here to just give, an, give people an idea of how massage can make a difference um, with a child that has autism or ADD, ADHD? Because I know you've, got, you've had many success stories, but I think it might be helpful to hear something specific um, since this is such a um, misunderstood condition, and like you said, there's so many different things that fall into it, I think it would be really helpful. Well, there are, obviously there are lots of things, which is, and I mentioned sort of like, you know, even just a child making eye contact for the first time, and these seem like little benefits, but they're huge, especially to a family who, if their child has never spoken, I've had children that start speaking uh, during massage, which is uh, pretty amazing. One um, mom, she actually came to my workshop, the, the two-day workshop that I do that's specifically for autism spectrum disorder. She came as a parent seeking information to work with her child. And one of the things that she shared on the very first morning of class, the reason she was there was because her daughter won't even let her hold her hand when they go shopping. And so she got very emotional and upset and said, you know, I just want to know how, to, how I can touch my daughter and what to do. And so we went through the whole day and, and showed some techniques. And one of the techniques that I use with this population is a technique that we use on the hand. So she went home that evening and, and came back the next day and reported. I asked everyone in the, in the class, did anyone have an opportunity to practice any techniques last night? And she raised her hand and she said, I did. And I went home and I asked my daughter if I can practice it with my homework. She said, can I practice this technique on your hand? And if you want me to stop, I will. And so she did this technique on one hand and her daughter actually then put out her other hand and asked for more massage. And she said it was the first time ever she'd let her really touch her hand just 
touch her, and then she actually requested more, which was amazing. And I've actually kept in touch with her, uh, with this mom now, and, and she's sharing some more stories. And her daughter lets her hold her hand in the mall now, which she never let her do that before. And it's to us, it might seem like such a tiny, such a tiny thing. We take it for granted that you hold your child's hand when you're walking through a shopping mall, but she'd never been able to. And so there was all of this emotion behind that she didn't feel as connected with her, and she didn't feel that bond and there wasn't that piece was missing, and now she felt like she's actually actually gained that um, between the two of them, which was it's pretty ama- it's pretty amazing. That really is, and I would assume and imagine that people that are taking this class with you or, or your longer workshops, those of us that are practitioners, they're going to learn how to do some self care or teach some self care. I'm sorry, I guess it's not self care, is it? If you're not doing it on yourself how to do some home care for these kids that their parents or siblings or other caregivers might um, be able to do on them. Is that is that accurate? Absolutely. In all of my uh, pediatric courses, as much as providers come with the anticipation of learning techniques that they will utilize hands-on with their clients, which is a huge element of, of it, of course, you're always working with the family and other care providers around the child. So even though the techniques we learn are really geared as ourselves, the professional, to go in and use the technique with our client, we always have an educational component where we want to teach the family something they can use. We want to leave mom or dad or or big brother or sister with even something simple to use until we come back for the next session. And a lot of practitioners worry about that. They think that will actually hurt their practice. It doesn't hurt your practice. It helps the family. It helps them make a connection. It helps them to be empowered to use touch appropriately. But they'll actually request for you to come back because they want to see whether kind of progress you can make. And they want to see if you have other techniques to learn. So it actually helps your practice in a way, um, which is important. But it not only helps your practice, because that's what we first think about, but it helps that family. Because a lot of them are scared to touch or they just don't know how. And so to be able to even just leave something simple, two techniques with them, it's amazing. It it makes a huge difference. It's just incredible work, and I think it's something that a lot of people are going to be interested in in, um, getting more information on when they come to the conference. Um, Maybe they're just interested in exploring it now, or they may already be working with this type of population or thinking about it. Do you have any advice for those folks that are, are looking into doing this? Um, work with autism and kids with ADD, ADHD? Well, definitely I one of the things is if you want to work with this group, it is a really good idea. If you don't have um, any background in this group, if you haven't already been working with children on the spectrum or you don't have that experience already, it's very important that you seek out additional information, whether it is a massage therapy course geared towards children with autism, um, ADD, and ADHD, or even other courses that maybe are for professionals or families on on how to work with this population because it is so different. So it would be a really good idea. Like one of my colleagues, as an example, is an acupuncturist, and she's been uh, seeing an increase in her uh, patient base or her client base of children on the spectrum. So one of the things that she's found very interesting is it's how do you explain that there, this is a needle, but it's not a needle, and it doesn't hurt, and, it, and, and it's, it's different. It's a different uh, situation, she says, than even having to explain it just to a child because these children, some of them don't have that abstract or they don't have that thinking or they think it will hurt or they're not sure. And so even just her approach is different uh, based on learning about how to work with these children using massage. So just to have that foundation of how to work with these um, children is super important no matter what um, discipline you practice. Excellent. And, Tina, I know a lot of people are going to want to do some of the further education with you or maybe just give some support to the Little Kids Foundation. Um, Will you share your contact information so that they can get in touch, make a donation, or sign up for one of your classes? Absolutely. We have uh, actually two websites, and littlekids.com is the website where you will find all of the information about courses and um, educational offerings, conferences, and that piece. Littlekids.org is the website for those people who may wish to consider the volunteering aspect, or you mentioned possibly making a donation, and and, um, that's definitely always 
something that we welcome. We are a nonprofit organization, and so to have um, the ability to bring this information to as many children as possible is always something that we're working towards. So there are those two websites that would provide a lot of information, as well as have emails there for contact or telephone numbers, which anyone is always welcome to use, and um, we're always happy to provide additional information or answer questions or just try to help get um, those people that are looking for information steered in the right direction. And those uh, websites have a unique spelling. Uh, can you share that so people make sure they get to the right one? Absolutely. Right <laughs> um, you bet. It has a phonetic spelling, and so it's little kids, but it's L I D as in David, D as in David, L E K as in kite, I D as David, Z as in zebra, dot com or dot org. Well, thank you, Tina. And I want to make sure that everyone knows how to get signed up for your classes and the conference. So I'm going to switch gears here for a moment. The American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference is one of the largest exhibitions of massage, chiropractic, and acupuncture products, continuing education, and business opportunities for practitioners of all three disciplines. This year's conference will feature over 100 exhibitors, continuing education classes of one-hour, three-hour, and one-day workshops, including Tina's. Other events during the weekend include a free keynote presentation sponsored by ABMP, with Dean Juhan, the author of Job's Body, a charity golf tournament benefiting the Make-A-Wish Foundation and a wish child from San Diego, uh, which I mentioned earlier and that Tina has been involved in, uh, as well as the One Concept Gala and Dinner Dance. Now, the registration cost for the conference is just $40, which includes admission to the trade halls and all one-hour presentations, participation in raffles, and giveaways of literally thousands of dollars in prizes. Uh, there will also be between-class coffee breaks and loaded goodie bags. Now, attendees will also have access to many special offers and promotions from the conference exhibitors, as well as the chance to have a fantastic time with friends and colleagues. For students, the conference offers a free student day and Smart from the Start program on Friday, which is sponsored by Massage Warehouse Script and Performance Health. This day is dedicated to massage, chiropractic, and acupuncture students who are currently enrolled in school or who will graduate in 2012 and includes a free gift bag for the first 350 people. Also on Friday, all attendees are invited to attend a special presentation, Disciplines Unite, from 12 until 2, and the One Concept Job Fair from 2 until 4. All of this is happening at the Conference Hotel. That's the Town & Country Resort and Conference Center. And I definitely suggest you make plans to stay there if at all possible. Single or double rates are just $125 a night, but space is limited. So please make your reservations now. Also, MPA Media is printing the American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference Event Program inside all three of their magazines, Massage Today, Acupuncture Today, and Dynamic Chiropractic. These will be given out at the conference and distributed throughout the U.S. to over 133,000 practitioners. So if you are a vendor or educator who's listening in today and you want to get some great exposure for your class or product, please contact Sandy Pierce of MPA Media for details on being a part of the conference program. So if you're ready to register for the 2012 American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference in San Diego, and of course to meet myself, Tina, and the other amazing instructors, there are now two ways to do so. First, you can register online or pick your courses, pardon me, and <laughs> pick your courses instantly on the official conference websites, AmericanMassageConference.com, AmericanAcupuncturConference.com, or AmericanChiropracticConference.com, depending on your discipline. You may also register by phone. The call is free, and operators are waiting to speak with you at 877-674-3504. That's 877-674-3504. We also invite you to stay connected with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash American Massage Conference, American Chiropractic Conference, and American Acupuncture Conference. Again, the 2012 American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference is made possible by all of our wonderful sponsors. Thank you so much to Massage Warehouse Script, MPA Media, H.J. Ross, 
ABMP, and Massage Envy Careers. I'm sure after today's broadcast, everyone listening is ready to come to the conference and register for this wonderful three-hour class on Pediatric Massage, highlighting massage for autism and ADD, ADHD with Tina Allen. Tina, thanks again for being with us today and for choosing to be a part of the 2012 uh, American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference. We're so honored to have you at this event, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in April. Thank you so much, Felicia. I am uh, really happy to be a part of the conference, and I look forward to seeing everybody in sunny San Diego. Well, we're looking forward to having you there. Everyone, this is Felicia Brown, and on behalf of everybody from the American Massage, Chiropractic, and Acupuncture Conference and One Concept Radio, I want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of the pre-conference broadcast series. Please remember to tune in each week through April 16th for more interviews and to visit our websites and Facebook pages for replays of all the interviews in the series. We look forward to seeing you in San Diego in April. Please also consider joining us for the Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference this fall in beautiful Niagara Falls, Ontario, October 12th through 14th, 2012. Thanks again for tuning in, and have a fabulous day.